Watch. Fishery officers go on patrol in the Marlborough Sounds. Make sure they're a bit bigger before you shoot them, because once they've been shot, they're too much stuff. Hayden tries to clean up Rangi Toto. Found a blow-up doll and a trampoline. And scallop hunters get greedy at Great Barrier Island. We've got one undersized snapper and we've got um, a whole heap of undersized scallops. It's a beautiful day and Ministry of Fisheries officers have teamed up with the crew of the naval patrol vessel HMNZS Rotuiti to check recreational fishing boats in the Marlborough Sounds. What we'll do is that we'll just sort of hang around here while you guys do all the boats around here. And then when you start going up the Chetwood Island there, we'll just shoot through the gap and start heading towards Durbel. And once you're finished around there, just come and pick us back up. OK. Good. Hold The area was once renowned for blue cod, but by 2008 it was recognised that the fishery was in serious danger and a four-year ban was put in place to give fish stocks in the inner sounds time to recover. So we're in the um, head of uh, Pelora Sound at the moment. Um, there's a closed area for blue cod which is from Tiakaroa Point over there to Stuffers Reef which is over there. And uh, we're just going to inspect a few recreational vessels and see what they've got on board and um, see how it goes. The regulations governing blue cod in the sounds changed on the 1st of April. But at the time of this patrol, the fishery was closed and the first boat they come across is well inside the restricted area. How are you today, sir? Yeah, all right, you? All good? Yeah. What have we got on board? Can you grab it for you? Yep. Okay, nice size kawai and some cod. Oh, where did you catch the cod, sir? Uh, towards the end of that, you get the uh, the jagged rocks out there. Have you? And then halfway down that next, so it's beyond the points. Yeah. I've got a GPS yep. plotter there, so. The guys are claiming their GPS plotter and some okay. photographs prove that the fish were caught outside the inner sounds. Okay, so this is this is where you took the fish yeah. today, is it? Yeah, yes. Yep, okay, thank you very much. Thanks. And um, do you guys have a, a ruler on board, like yes. a measuring board? Yep. I'll just do a quick measure up and, um, and we'll leave you alone, okay? No problem. But where they caught the cod is only one of the issues here. Some of the fish are under the legal size of 30 centimetres. Now that one, he's too small. I take that at about 28 and a half. Yeah. OK, so we'll, we'll have a quick measure of the others, see sure. what we've got. OK. See that one there, uh, undersized as well. Yeah. Do you go to the centre of the tail? The centre, the centre of the tail. Oh, nine, nine legal size cod, three undersized. We've got 12 cod and three of these are less than 30 centimetres. So um, that, that is a problem around here because we've got a lot of, um, the fishery's under a lot of pressure and um, there's a lot of juvenile fish around and we're trying to reduce the mortality of the juvenile fish. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate you. The skipper of the boat received a $250 infringement notice for having undersized cod. But the fact that he had proof of where the fish came from means he'll avoid further penalties. We require that they take photographs of some with the fish and some notable landmark, like you know, like the Chetwoods or um, the outer reaches of the sounds, um, and they can also take a, a man overboard mark on the plotter, and um, those are pretty good ways of going about it, especially if they have a picture of them holding the fish where it came from. As the patrol continues in the Marlborough Sounds, another fisheries team are checking out boats around Great Barrier Island. Have you, all, have you all measured your fish? Yeah. First inspection of the day is a charter boat filled with fishermen who've caught a large pile of snapper. Four charters, yeah, that's 99 it. snapper, 11 anglers, and four hours fishing. Fantastic. But it's all good. They're absolutely within the law and there's nothing undersized. Everybody here seems quite happy about fishery officers being around, but there's always somebody who would rather they stayed away. He's throwing stuff back in. Yeah, I think he's measuring out of the bucket. He's 
see a ton of fun now. Yeah. Just from the Ministry of Fisheries. How long ago did you ever dive? Oh. Half an hour ago. You're only just measuring them now. Counting and measuring scallops is supposed to be done either in the water or as soon as you get out. But this guy's had time to change. How many are in there, do you know? About 50, 60. How many people on board? Oh, yeah. With two people on board, they shouldn't have more than 40 scallops. And it looks like most of the ones still in the bucket are too small. Scallops have to be um, 100 millimetres um, from, in width from, from one side to the other. Um, and this one comes in at yeah, about 92, so it's 8mm eight, eight too small. But there's even more problems on the boat. Well, you've already shut some Yeah, it's on board. Um, pretty close to 40. Unless they're going to be eaten on board, scallops are supposed to be kept in the shell until after they're landed, so they can be measured. But because fisheries have already found undersized fish on board, the question now is how many? Make that 40 to stop there. Yep. So straight away, I'm going to allow you to take your daily okay. take for two people. As the count moves past the 40 the two are allowed, the bill for the day's fishing is getting bigger. He shouldn't be in possession of more than 40. And he shouldn't be in possession of undersize. So that's a $250 infringement for both offences, so 500 in total. Your dive gear's all packed up pretty much every time to dry it get changed into dry clothes to all that stuff. Yeah. With the scallops, you mean to count and measure at your first available opportunity. OK. The strictest could... interpretation of that is right. on the bottom. Right. But however, we do allow some latitude. Yeah, because I used but to... But when we come, to, I'll, just, I'll just finish, when we come to a vessel, we expect you to be in your wetsuit and oh, right. to have a cup of tea or do anything okay. else. Counting yeah. and measuring, that's the first thing you right. do. Then you go and get changed and pack your gear away. Okay. And we're, we're happy with it. If you're still in your wetsuit, you just come out yeah, of the water, right. fair enough. Okay. You dived clearly a while ago, everything's dry, yeah. um, packed up. Yeah, it's, it's probably half an hour ago or so. Yeah, mm. so you've got to do it straight away. Okay. So it's going to be an infringement for that, and also infringement for the system. While the patrol was dealing with this offence, they had noticed a boat with a dive flag up. And now it's heading off without any signs that the people on board have counted or measured their catch. A joint Navy and Fisheries Patrol has been busy checking out boats in the Marlborough Sounds, although many haven't been fishing at all. Hello, how are you today? We're well, thank you. Cool, cool. We've got nothing. Got nothing. Empty crayfish dive bags, no fish. No, no fish at all. Dollars, no nothing. Stuff all. <laughs> what do you want to do? Have a look at stuff all. You're welcome. Why are you out here then? Hey? Why are you out here we then? We went out for a dive. But the next boat they check has a dive flag up, and this time it's a pair of spear fishermen. Is anyone else in the water besides yourself? No. Okay. Cool. We're from fisheries. We're just doing a routine patrol. No worries. So, do you have any fish on board the boat? The trouble with spear fishing is that the fish look much bigger underwater than they actually are, and the three morky they've caught are all borderline. How do those ones measure up? When, when you get a chance, it's all good. It's under size, is it? Yeah. You probably need to be a bit more careful to try and know the sizes and make sure they're a bit bigger before you shoot them, because once they've been shot, they're too much stuff. The legal size for blue and red morky is 40 centimetres. Four mil under. Four mil under. Yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, under is under. Is under. Yeah. OK. He's, he's a put back as well. How big's that one? Red morky. 40 centimetres. 40 centimetres. Yeah. 39. 39. OK, so none of those are any good. The divers were given a verbal warning for taking undersized fish. Yep. Spear fisherman needs to be a very good estimate matter of size um, because obviously once you've shot something it's dead. If they shoot the first fish and they they take that one up and measure it and use that as a judgment for all the rest of them. So if the first one they thought it was enormous, they shot at it and found it's undersize, um, then they need to be aiming for a really absolute giant fish.
It was the last chick of the day, but there was still some work to do on the way home. Oh, well, we've just been um, cruising our way back into um, into uh, Picton, and we've um, come across this little dinghy floating around by itself. So um, we'll take that in. Um, it'll stop people reporting it as you know a potential accident or something like that, and somebody will get their dinghy back. We have a, have a boat approaching us now. Um, I expect they want to talk to us about their missing dinghy, which is very lucky for them, really. Get it back. Hello. Oh, well, no problem. All right. Up in Auckland, the 1,300 students and 700 adults gathering on King's Wharf are here with a purpose. They're about to spend the day cleaning up Rangitoto Island. OK, can all volunteers who have signed in go past the silver car and hang out over there, please? Hayden Smith's one of the organisers of today's trip, and his Harbour Clean operation has been cleaning up the Waitemata since 2003. Over the past eight years, we've actually now removed over two and a half million litres of rubbish. If you take a, an average rubbish sack, being 50 litres, it, we've been able to keep count of how many bags we've removed, and, and that's really what's, what we've been able to achieve, which has been fantastic. While the volunteers are loaded onto the ferry, Hayden heads over to Rangi Toto to make a start. And, as usual, the coast is covered in rubbish. It still amazes me every time I come here as to how much rubbish is actually here. So, um, yeah, it, it's pretty devastating. But that's why we're here today. That's why we've got 2,000 kids coming across the island today. And it's about them seeing what's happening here so we can create that connection for people between the land and the sea again. The rubbish is carried to the island from all parts of the city, and Hayden knows to expect to find anything and everything. Um, a lot of plastic bottles, um, chip packets, lolly wrappers again, we've got plastic bags, um, Tupperware containers, bottle tops are a, a uh, bit of a problem, and also finding quite a few bait bags as well. So, um, yeah, it's, it's coming from all angles, from the land and the sea as well. As well as the usual stuff, there's always the chance of something strange turning up. We found a jar of mercury once, we found a blow-up doll and a trampoline, as well as obviously many fishing rods and yeah, pretty much everything you can possibly think of, including the kitchen sink. There's no blow-up dolls or kitchen sinks today, but it takes less than an hour for Hayden to collect enough rubbish to fill dozens of bags. We're going to get this all back onto the boat now and we're going to head back around and catch up with the kids out there. Um, because it's, it's all about them today and that's you know, what we need to see, the kids out there experiencing what we experience on a day-to-day -day basis. It takes a while to get the rubbish onto their boat, the Phil Warren. Then it's time to meet up with the volunteers. And the prospect of 2,000 people on the cleanup means that they'll be able to make a real impact on the problem. And they're all going to walk around the island. We're going to have them basically taking care of the whole coast around here. And it's going to be interesting to see how much rubbish we can actually pick up from here today. What sort of what sort of things what sort of things are you finding out here? Hey man, we found a rugby ball, bottle tops, rugby ball, bottle tops, bottle tops, bottle tops and uh, little things that birds can choke on. Lots of little stuff. Lots of little yeah, stuff. These things here. Yeah. No, like that, that that's a little thing for a bird, especially. It is indeed. The volunteers get to work, but it doesn't take long before they start to realise that rubbish doesn't just create a mess; it also poses real dangers to the bird life on the island. We've seen hooks through 
feet and back up through the, the bill of, of birds before and back down to the other, other foot, so they actually haven't been able to fly. Well, I actually found another seagull with, with some more fishing line, and it looks like he's, he's either got a hook inside his stomach and he's got something hanging out. There's nothing they can do for the gull, and there's plenty of evidence that the bird's plight is a common one, and usually it's fatal. But it's not just fishing hooks that kill birds. An increasing amount of plastic is making its way onto the island. What we've got down here is uh, the raw plastic pellets, which are, are really creating what we're seeing as a uh, plastic sand, which is actually starting to cover the island and, and everywhere out there. They've, they've come from the plastics industries, um, where the forklifts have, have pierced bags and, and the, the product has been released down through the drains again. But it certainly having a pretty devastating impact again also on the coast. The day wears on and the rubbish dumps grow as a steady stream of volunteers deposit what they've gathered at collection points around the island. Another good load off the island today. So I think these, these kids are all pretty happy with their, with their effort as well. You know, they'll be a little bit tired by the time they get home. It's a long day out here on the coast and uh, damn good effort. It's been a successful day, and as the volunteers board the ferry to return to the mainland, the task of getting all the rubbish they've collected off the island can begin. Love Your Coast Day resulted in more than 200,000 pieces of rubbish being removed from the island. Further north, fishery officer Anna is about to board a boat that's been out getting scallops. Hi there. Ministry of Fisheries, we're just going to come alongside. You've just been for a dive, have you? Yep. Get some scollies? Yeah, we've got a few. OK, so how many of you were diving and how many of you got on board? Two diving, there's four people on board. OK, and how many scallops have you got? We don't know. You don't know. OK. Right. Sort OK, so you, have you measured so oh, far? We, we measured, we had, yeah. Yeah. Done a few. Did you measure as you go when you as you've been collecting them off the bottom? Mostly. Only one of us had one of these. So. Okay. All right. Well, the what yeah. the regulations say with regard to gathering the scallops is that you must measure them um, and count them at the first available opportunity. Yeah. Okay. And I can see that you're still in your wetsuit, but you've yeah. upped anchor and you've you've moved spots. Yeah, we're just going to because we've got a person on board that's not too not too well. Yeah. OK, well, look, we're going to have a bit of a count up here. Yep. These divers have been using scuba gear to gather the scallops, so they should have measured them on the bottom. But as soon as Anna empties the bag, it's obvious that there's a problem here. We've got um, a whole heap of undersized scallops at this stage. There's a total of 127 scallops in the bag, and 95 of them are undersized. You're putting all the small ones here, yeah? Do you agree that these um, 95 scallops here, that you watched us measure them and they, you agree that they're under, under size? Well, I guess so. There's one yeah. or two that are pretty yeah. marginal. But more bad news was to come. Because the boat has moved, the scallops haven't been counted and measured on the bottom and they're all in one bag, it's possible that all the excess scallops will be attributed to the skipper. And that means he could lose his boat. So, yeah, what we've done is we've done the quick maths on it. Yeah. Um, basically, what happens is here that you're three times over the, um, the legal limit of scallops um, as well. Yeah. All right, um, even taking into account the four people on board. OK, yes. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're the skipper, eh? You're the skipper yeah. and running yeah. the boat. OK, yeah. so it goes down like this. It's 127 total. Yep. Yeah. You had another diver go down with you? Yep. One diver can take his limit and then up to two separate bag limits for the skipper and a safety person. Yeah. Okay. So, so take away the 20 for him, yeah. 20 for the other two people, that leaves you in a position of 67. So you allowed 20 for the day, 67 is over three times a day. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, down I on didn't individual. understand that. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. That's the only way it can be broken down. Oh, okay. It's individual responsibility. So. Yeah. They're not going to be looked at. Yeah. Looking at you as a skipper, because yeah. you're yeah. in charge of the vessel and yeah. control what happens. Yeah. Yeah. The idea that they might lose their boat came as a shock to the people on board, but this isn't a minor right, offence. Right. Um, 
Um, it was a serious non-commercial offence in that we had three times the legal number of scallops and, they, and most of them were undersized as well. So what we've ended up doing is seizing and bonding back the boat to them. After a discussion at fisheries, it was decided to split the excess catch between the two divers, meaning that each received an infringement notice for having excess and undersized scallops, but they didn't lose their boat.